Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the opening weekend of films um, and, and the great selections that we had. Um, you do have a day to catch your breath tomorrow. And if you haven't watched Mutan, then please do watch Mutan. It is available for you tomorrow and then again next Monday. Now, as you watch the films, don't forget to vote for your favorite films. You can do that after this live stream as well. You can go back in and vote for your favorite films. Um, during the um, interview, we welcome you to send in any questions that you may have. Uh, just send it in through chat and we'll be able to um, answer your questions for you. So folks, with us today, I hope you enjoyed Anand Gopal as much as I did. I mean, what a beautiful film, wouldn't you agree? Well, with us today is the lead actress, Bhagyushri Millen. He plays the role of Anandi, and she is here. Welcome, Bhagyushri. So Bhagyushri, hey, welcome. Bhagyushri started her journey into film as a child actor in a film called Balak Palak. And then her next film was Ubuntu, where she, and then after that, she came across the role of Anandi in Anandi Gopal. And she has been very active in Marathi theater, and she's also done a commercial play, BP, as well as an experimental play called Zopala. So we're so pleased to have you here with us, Bhagishri. Welcome. Yes, thank, and you, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And interviewing Bhagishri is our very own Dr. Uma Kotegal. She's a patron of the Indian Film Festival of Cincinnati. She is an executive leader, population and community health, and a senior fellow, Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Dr. Kotegal was director of the neonatal intensive care units at the University Hospital and at Cincinnati Children's for several years. And she has always um, enjoyed our films, been to our films, interviewed the directors. And so I welcome you, Uma. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Well, so now that we, uh, we're done with the introduction, I'm gonna hand it over to Uma. Uma, it's your show. I don't know if it's my show. It's certainly Bhagishri's show. So let me start with you, Bhagishri, and say what a delight this movie was to watch. And I must confess, I watched it twice starting this afternoon because I was so enthralled by the story, by your presence, um, by this very contrarian husband, uh, yet very passionate about feminism. Um, and I wonder um, if you could say a little bit, if you don't mind my starting with, what motivates him in this movie? What makes him so committed and so c convicted in his idea of advancing your progress and your support? Uh, I think uh, he saw the potential in Anand Devai Zoshi. Of course, they both were complementing each other. It was never one-sided. It was in both ways. Initially, yes, he she was a child. She was just a child. So you cannot force a child into doing something. They always wanted to play. They always want to do something else, but not study. So initially, he had to force her into studying. But then she kind of picked it up. And it was her idea to be a doctor. And he motivated her, he supported her because also he also recognized the need for doctors and he recognized what she was trying to do, what she was trying to say. So I think that's something which was uh, very interesting and that must have motivated him also to go through that journey with her. Um, where does her courage come from in this movie? It's, it's so strange that for a 12, 13 year old girl, to actually uh, say that I want to be a doctor. She was so, she was underage. She didn't know anything about the world because at that time, ladies would never uh, come out of the houses. But it was something which I think it came out of a tragedy she had uh, because she lost a child. And at that time, if you look at the era, it was a very, it used to happen a lot. 
a child's death or a mother's death because the ladies were not ready the girls were not ready to take that responsibility uh, their bodies were not ready so that yeah. used to happen a lot and very few people actually saw that as a problem but the awareness wasn't there as such i think when she went through that tragedy herself she realized that whatever happened to me it shouldn't happen to anyone else so that is something which is very interesting for that age and for that uh, for the era of where there was no awareness as such uh, she thought that she should be a doctor and she did everything successfully i was i you know having come from india being a physician myself and having trained in bombay and having thought about medicine as a as a vocation for a long time i was struck uh by how long ago this was in in my mental models had never imagined a woman back that early thinking about this in such a deep and devotional way and i wondered how you felt from the story point of view and as you played the character how you felt about it it felt like i thought it would be a very masculine dominated movie and instead it turned out to be like a modern marriage of equality and support for her how how did you as you were approaching this think about equality patronage you know in your own confidence i don't mean by you with your character's confidence in doing this well uh, i i i yeah, lost can i just say something very quickly um karan sharma has joined us he's the writer yeah. of the yes. um, of yeah. of the gopal and i just wanted to let you guys know and dr portugal is doing the interview and i'm lucky upon him hi hi <laughs> go ahead bagishri Yes, uh, uh, sorry, I lost the lo last word she said. Uh, I lost the connection in between. No, just just the just what motivates what motivates him to be supportive of her and motivates her to be so bold. Yes, you know, at a time, I don't know, maybe at that era it was still okay, but I was kind of conjuring going back to the eighteen hundreds and thinking about how might this work and who singular. <laughs> you know who singular power drives this uh, as as i said both complemented each other and they were so they were so sure and she was so sure about what she wanted to do i think that is something it's the unbelievable extraordinary will power she had uh, the time when as i said women never stepped out of the house she was ready to go to america and live there for 3 years i think that's a huge deal so uh, it's something which is extraordinary and i don't know what exactly uh, what's the singular power or maybe i think it's just a will power the selflessness to change this particular thing of society to make people aware and to give them a service of a lady doctor and then and women doctors were were important in they weren't there in, they weren't there they were not there so they she was there. maybe few she british was, ladies yeah maybe for yeah. british doctors but uh, in general that wasn't very i like i said i was struck by how ambitious she was but yet how soft she was yeah and how did you play that character that balance of being you, you know quite uh, ambitious for herself quite yes. determined but at the same time part of a marriage part of you know do you think that in as you play the role how did you think through that see uh, that uh, uh, the era is 1800 and at that time women were slightly docile they were like that they were very cultured they were very uh, of course she she comes across as a determined person but even if when she goes to america she doesn't forget her roots she is still uh, thinking of how the gopara joshi how the gopa thinking about how the gopara joshi is actually uh, what what he is writing what he is saying to her so i think that's the part of the culture where she comes across as a very soft person she is determined about her uh, her ambition to be a doctor that is something which is she is very sure about but at the same time being a indian woman and being she was very proud of that identity also 
so i think that comes very naturally to the ladies of those era that was something which was there inherited in those ladies N- natural in terms of their generosity natural in terms of natural their... in terms of how the society used to function that was something see as i said women never used to step out of the house they yeah. never used to uh, say the name of the husband they would always uh, uh, hold their pallu like this and i think that was, that's how the women were brought up that's how the questioning of women were that this is something you are supposed to do and that's how i think she also addressed this so she herself so she struck me and i certainly would welcome the director speak as well she struck me as modern um you know she struck me as a feminist and that startled me you know i mean just thinking about that long ago in and although she was um soft and mild and conforming in some ways in some ways she was she was very rebellious and i and and certainly her husband's support of her obviously gave her a lot of strength so as you imagine this character and i'm asking the director i guess this character the of, of the, the writer the writer the writer the writer, the writer. yes yeah. doctor uh, yes mr karan sharma that is the director i don't know what the director is there you know mr samir vidwan the director could not be with us today he was traveling and so also the lead yeah. actor yeah. and um i had asked the producer to see if you could come on because it's oh. such a lovely story and i really we really like to know where you got your inspiration from and you know what you had to do yes. to really bring the story to life because um it was so poignant it was really very very poignant and did you have a role in finding the person to to enact your script or you know what what did you do after you wrote the film did you just hand it over or did you have a say and yeah yeah bagishri should play this role or you know things like that uh-huh. i'm still so curious about it oh uh, uh, no yeah. I mean, def- definitely uh, i think the whole uh, it's interesting what she said was that you know she comes across as a feminist i think what really struck me initially was the fact that the husband was a feminist yes i think that was sort of um Mm-hmm. what struck me the most when i came across this story is that i don't think you have it, it i think it's very rare to find a man like him even in today's times mm-hmm. because he was like so and especially in a country like india where you know i mean um, women are like still fighting for their right uh, rights and basic rights i mean this is not even like you know and yeah. for him to kind of like put for the condition that it's uh, I'll only get married to her if you give me the permi- if you give me the permission to educate her. So I think that is what really sort of struck me. And staying with him and um, like you know, uh, uh, initially she's just scared that he's going to leave her. That's why she just kind of like does everything that he wants her to do. But slowly and steadily, it sort of becomes her dream, and he just sort of becomes an anchor. So I think that what she said is that how they complement each other so beautifully, and it's such an odd couple that you don't even expect them to sort of like you know uh, mm-hmm. uh, come together in the first place. Was and I I saw it as a love story more than anything else in the beginning yeah. because I was how did these two people like even like what would their conversations be? How did he kind of like you know he was like a mentor also he was also a husband. So I think there was so many different dynamics to this relationship, and then of course it turned like it was a it's a true story. So you're like. how and so relevant to today and yes. something that can resonate with everybody and you know everywhere so i felt that you know that is something that really struck me of course initially the whole idea was that uh, look because in india you know there's sort of a herd mentality that if one sort of a genre is doing well everybody starts to make those kind of movies so as a writer at that time I was like okay let me find a true story let me find a biopic that will really like you know the producers will jump out and say okay let's do this so i was looking at that and then i came across this story and i was like completely uh stumped by what i read there was not a lot of material that was available actually so um from whatever little i could like gather and stuff is when i uh, i started writing it and i actually wrote it like in a month's time i still remember <laughs> yeah it just and it just and 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 uh, i don't know it was like i i finished writing the script for some very uh, i don't know whether it was a what do you call it like a, a divine intervention or what but yeah, i finished writing yeah. on her birthday 
which was like very very uh, surprising to me also i was like okay this is the day like you know like she was born and i completed finished writing the script on that day and then of course i spoke to the producers and initially the whole, my whole thing was because i'm not a maharashtrian so the idea was i was trying to make it into a hindi movie at initially but uh, then and th- then these guys, i spoke to my producers uh, at nama pictures and they kind of like you know they they said you know what we should because it is the story is about like you know uh, a maharashtrian couple and you know it's so rooted in somewhere in that culture and so they said you know we should probably first make it in this language and then when i then they told me about like you know the director and i saw a couple of his movies and i was like i think he's really going to be able to do um, a lot of justice to the story and i think he exactly did that yeah. as far as uh, the casting is concerned i think like you know we couldn't believe that we got someone who looked so much like her so there was no like say or anything that is she good is she bad or like what because she was just so bang on like we couldn't like even if you see the poster of the film you like our first teaser poster was anandi's uh, anandi's uh, 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 what do you say original picture and then we came up with bhagishi's picture so we were like oh my god i don't think that the, the resemblance was like just too uncanny and we were like really lucky that you know we got someone who could just make you believe that yeah she is anandi so i think yeah i just like kind of everything like just fits very well um there there are so many um i mean there was so much to feel uh, warm and fuzzy about Uh, yeah. you, you know it was such a a feminist picture at the same time as it was a picture of love between two people who seemed um gentle in their in their in their space and i wonder you, you know as you played the character how did you um uh, bagish how did you think about this um as you prepared for the for playing this role of this woman who seems so sweet and you know devoted and kind at the same time so determined mm. uh it was a bit challenging for me uh but uh, as i was reading the story i got to understand how she really functions and i started uh identifying with her not as in uh you know i could not uh, yeah. I, like i can understand what she must have gone through i understood what she was feeling at that time so i think when there was an empathy for her yeah. and i could feel what she must have felt at that moment i think that was the connect which uh, uh, which actually brought me close to her i think that's how i approached i approached her as a human being as a girl who was very simple naive a uh, very bright child and how she goes through, goes through a tragedy and then how the things start happening after that and how she was instrumental in doing few things also so i think that was really interesting for me and i started uh, i started liking her of course she she is anandi bai so she is a legend for sure but then i started uh, uh, identifying with her and i could understand and feel what she must have gone through I think as a physician I see her uh, as a physician myself when I see her I see both the modernism that she needs in order to do her work and the grit you, you know which is kind of covered in a very soft kind of way but it's it's there her her passion for what she wants to do and how she kind of fights for it and you do such a fantastic job you know in, I, in having that balance of the gentleness and the i think the toughness and say a little bit about how you practice to get to that kind of space uh i i used to read whatever material i had at that time because there is a less material there is not enough but uh, i read her letters i ah. uh, go, yes she wrote some letters to gopal rao joshi to some of her friends also so i wrote her so that's how i got to know about how she used to think uh, about certain things uh, we had a we conducted a workshop gitanjali kulkarni who played our mother in law uh, she conducted our workshop and uh, that's how we uh, we could go back to that era and understand the era first i think that was the essential part and uh, uh, i think uh, reading lots lots uh, reading the script lot of times and reading the book reading about her reading her letters i think that's how i uh how did you find her letters sorry how did you, 
They're available. How did you guys find her letters? They're available. Wow. That was the first kind of book that was like out, which was like just correspondence of letters between her and um, the character that you knew, and Mrs. Carpenter, the woman in America who kind of like helped her. Those were, and then her, after she went to America, the correspondence between her and her husband. So that was like the first piece of uh, written material that was available. Oh, wow. Uh, and the, the gentleman, too, did such a great job. I mean, uh, you, you had such good chemistry, too. But yes. such great chemistry with your actor. Uh, give us a, a feel for what that was like. Uh, I think he's an amazing actor. Uh -huh. And uh, it was so comfortable to work with him. He was a star. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was still this very new and childlike person on the set. But there was a synergy among all the people who were present on the set. I think that uh, translated into the screen. And we, we had a good chemistry, uh, good camaraderie off screen also, all our co-actors. And we, we had a lots of fun, I think. So, yeah. uh, and every everyone from costume designers to our uh, assistant directors to the director, of course. I mean, print booth, I, I have to say that Samir Vidwans, our director, was very much helpful for me. And I mm -hmm. think uh, I would I would credit a lot to him for the whatever performance you see. You think in terms of the interpretation of the story that he was helpful to you? Yeah, in a lot of ways. Also, when it, when it comes to the performances, yeah. you need yeah. a director to guide you. And he mm -hmm. was such a good help for uh, all of us. And he was an anchor of the ship. In this modern era, I mean, she is very modern. Yes. But from yes. a long time ago. What, and what do you, what, what should we take away from her, her qualities? You know, I mean, as I advise medical students and I talk to people who are going into medicine, they're young and they're eager and they want to kind of like be first in class. And in, in, in her character, I see kind of a different way of being, which is more principled and, mm -hmm. and um, I think uh, uh, singularly focused in a way. What, yes. what, what would you say to to folks at Grant Medical College, where I graduated from in Bombay, about what we could learn from her story? I think uh, medical or being a doctor itself is such a selfless job. Uh, and if you see, um, this is something which was told to me by my producer, that whenever there was a revolution, the people who were present there, they never did it for themselves. It was for the upcoming generation they did for the betterment of the society. So in a way, she was doing everything selflessly. She'd gone through a lot in between. It was a very difficult time for 14, 15 year old girl. It is definitely very difficult to go through all that uh, when society was opposing you constantly. It's not very easy, but she was hell bent on being doctor because she knew that this is the need of the society. This is the need of the hour. Women needs doctor. She has said that sometimes uh, women cannot open up in front of male doctors. It wasn't the case. Uh, it's, it's different now. But at that time, women were traditional and they had this traditional approach. So when we say soft, she's kind of a traditional person also. Yeah. yeah so that's how the softness comes from. That's the conditioning she had. But also, uh, I feel she was so selfless and the passion came from, she didn't really have to do that, if you really yeah. see. But uh, she went through every every possible thing, both of them, because they could give a better uh, medical practices to the society and they could save the children and the pregnant girls from uh, going through a tragedy the way she actually had, had to go through. Yeah. So it was very selfless. I think being a doctor is a very selfless and very tiring job. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah maybe from, from the outside, <laughs> from whatever I've seen. Uh, I think we, we are stuck in difficult times also. So I think it That's seems true. very tireless and very yeah. different. So we have a few comments from the um, from yes. the audience. And um, if I may read them, it's, yeah. um, someone says, excellent film. Um, have to say, Bhagyashree's expressions uh, and the transformation was absolutely beautiful 
um, you did an excellent job. And, and um, uh, someone else said from the audience, congratulations, Bhagishri, you have a great future. And then Karan Sharma, simply beautiful, congratulations, stellar performance. And um, a couple of questions uh, also for Kurt, uh, a question to Karan. Do you feel the director sort of did justice and kept to the script, or do you think he deviated a lot? Were you happy with the, the final product? Because, you know, writers write and then, and movie makers, uh, you know, have the freedom to change things. And so that was a question for you. Yeah, but like I'm working with him again, so I don't think I would if he had changed a lot. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's, that's good to know. That's good to know. And uh, somebody else says, um, did this really happen back then? And yes, of course, it did really happen back then. Um, okay, was there? Yeah. So those those were the uh, those were the comments and and, and questions. And some I mean, fabulous direction from Samir with one. Uh, fabulous. And we're so, so sorry you're not here. Yeah. Um, I I. I, I think I'll watch this movie several times more. It's a very <laughs> deep story, uh, very poignant, uh, very yeah. feminist at the same time as it is, um, you know, modern. And, and a couple, yeah, a couple of questions that are here that I may I ask them, uh, Omar? Yeah, please. You're uh, in so, charge. Uh, which I missed, and it said um, someone wanted to know. Were you the same? Did you play the role of the little girl or was that your little sister? <laughs> no, no. I'm the only child. Her name is Ankita Goswami. And you're not related? No, no, right? no not at all. Not related. And then the other question was, um, how did that scene pan out when you slapped the, um, the, girl in school. Slapped the uh, English girl in school? How did um, that scene? How did that scene pan out? I'm not quite sure what the person meant by, by that. But, um, you know, uh, there were some scenes in that film that were very telling of the times, you know, because we were under British rule and Indians were looked at differently. And I think the cutest scene I thought, and I don't know if you agree, Uma, that was, you know, when she was sitting on that horse cart, uh, or, or it wasn't yeah. a horse cart, it was actually someone pulling the cart and there she was sitting on the little, um, what do you call it? Is Was that like a little ledge or, or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, call it buggy. 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 In Marathi, buggy. call it buggy. Yeah, I thought that was a very cute scene. And was that really <laughs> how people uh, uh, travel those yeah. days? Yeah? Yes, Anandibai was treated you know, the about, same you know about people, but, uh, but like the teacher, like that was like she, but the teacher and her, it was exactly like that. Like that's what we came yeah. across in our research because there was there was yeah. place for the person to sit on that buggy. So she asked her to sit on that so-called ledge or like you know whatever yeah. that was. Yeah, that was. Which was that actually looked down upon a lot by the others because they were like you know she comes from such an upper caste uh, Brahmin family and stuff like that, and you know she's been asked yes. to sit like that. But for these people, for the, for the two of them, all these things didn't really matter at all because you know. Uh, we were just interested in the the larger scheme of things, but it, like everybody else looked down upon it a lot of, at, during that time. It's a, that itself was like you know something that oh like you know being a Brahmin she's sitting like that yeah. and you know like yeah so. Oh lovely, lovely. The, it was tr it was tragic about her sort of coming to the U.S. and then you yeah. know really. Um, uh, Returning back in, yeah, in, in not so good a shape, and um, yeah, it was very I'm, important. Yeah, it, it felt it felt so heartbreaking given her potential and her capacity and how hard she must have worked for it. Yeah. Did you just come across the script somewhere and you decided, wow, this is terrific? Or I mean, it feels like a like a gold mine. <laughs> it was <laughs> for sure. Uh, no, I didn't come across, there was no script as such. I just came across uh, the story, this, this story and, and actually to be very honest on Wikipedia, nothing else. There's not wow. much material available as such. Then of course, when I started reading up a little bit and you know, I kind of like, I stumbled across those that 
the only book initially at that time was the the book with the letters. Then there was like another one or two books which were like fictionalized versions of what could have happened because there's not a lot of uh, literature available on their story. So I felt that you know, uh, uh, like a lot of it was also like your just the interpretation of what the relationship could have been or what the times were, yeah. and you know, like you, you be of course there was a lot of research on what the times were and what or you know like what were the customs and what were like what were con- what were the things were con- considered taboos and stuff. Situations were sort of created from uh, all of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, because we can't take any particular scene and say, oh, this exactly happened as yeah. is, because yeah. that's just not available. So I think uh, it was more of an interpretation of what this journey would have been, what this relationship was. And, you know, uh, but yeah, the spirit was, I think, is what we wanted to capture. And uh, like, you know, and I, it was just the yeah. fact that you know, something that resonate will resonate even uh, today with yeah. uh, everybody. So I think that is, which is why it was also written and I guess interpreted and directed also in in a slightly um, in a modern way. The yeah. approach yeah. was modern in terms yeah. of even like you know because we're like okay you're talking about a couple that doesn't seem like you know what our preconceived notion of a couple of that yeah. era would be. So we were like they they mm-hmm. they, they they think like what uh, we think or we should be thinking. Uh, so exactly the approach was that, you know, they should be like, you know, the scenes were also like, you know, there's, there's a, there's a scene between them. Like, you know, I don't know if that kind of like, you know, um, people in India really kind of connect with it and understand it is when she gets her periods. So they're not supposed to be like, you know, uh, anywhere near the kitchen and they're not supposed to be touching the food or anything of yeah. that sort of, you know, how he's just so, uh, chilled out about that. And he says, you know what, you go rest and I'll like take care of the kitchen and I'll cook and, you know, all of those things. So. Uh, and you still have people like, you know, girls even uh, today in, in India where, you know, they're not allowed to enter the kitchen. You're supposed to keep a distance from them. And, you know, they're like, you know, all of those things. I, I felt that, you know, uh, those things, now that is not something that is available now uh, anywhere. Like, you know, oh, this happened. But like, because you know that, you know, such things are like, you know, uh, what taboo or are yeah. taboo. You kind of like, you know, incorporated all those instances into the script and then sort of like use them to take the love story also forward and yet show how... Uh, liberal and yeah. uh, modern these characters were yeah I, I i was i was just gonna say it's a love story of of um, i mean you, you know uh, of um of so much uh pathos at the same time as so much joy you all did a fantastic job i think with it and uh I, I just think it's it's phenomenal what you've what you've produced and I'm going to go back and watch it another two more times with <laughs> more notes on it. It was, it was just beautiful. Just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bhagishri. Um, good luck with your future projects. We're going to follow you and we're going to follow you to current to see what you're going to be writing as well in the in the future. And um, Uma, uh, I'll let you wrap it up. Well, thank you so much. We are always grateful to hear directly from you because the story offers a lot of opportunity, but the discussion care, you know, helps us understand where you came from and how you thought about it and how you played the role. And that's a privilege we don't get very often, you know, sitting here. So, you know, thanks to my colleague for doing that. And thanks to both of you for getting up at five in the morning and and, uh, joining us. So Thank much, you. so much Thank much looking forward to Thank the next so one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's one of our favorite films at the festival. Yes. Thank you. Namaskar. And to the audience out there, please join us again this week and take in as many films as you can. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Bhagishree.